Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears, and let us render unto Caesar our box office cash. Go see this movie. Uh-huh, yeah, um, hmm, uh, uh, this one is kind of hard to talk about, guys. Not because it's bad, it, it is good, it is so good, it is so unbelievably good. It, it it's so good, actually, that I, I, I really am not sure what else to say other than just go see it, because it is so unbelievably well done, so beautiful, and so wonderfully told that it deserves to be seen to be believed. I mean, do you have any idea how rare it is that the third movie in a series is actually this good? Really damn rare. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with this series, allow me a brief moment to give you a quick background. The very original Planet of the Apes film, released in 1968, is one of the greatest staples of science fiction. It's a simple story of an astronaut who crash lands on a mysterious planet in which apes are the primary species, and humans have been reduced to basic instinct animals. It has one of the most clever science fiction scripts ever put to the silver screen, one of Charlton Heston's best performances, including some of his best lines, and yes, one of the greatest cinematic twists ever conceived. And despite that twist being almost 50 years old, if you still haven't seen this movie yet, I'm not gonna spoil the twist because you have to see it. Then in 2001, Tim Burton tried a reimagining with his take on the story, and Boy, did that suck. The one good thing that could be said about Tim Burton's movie, though, was the makeup. It was astonishing, especially for its time. But then after that flopped at the box office and failed miserably with most critics, Hollywood didn't really know what to do with Planet of the Apes series, other than, you know, just let it lie. But if there's anything we've learned from Hollywood, it's that they don't want to let go of a good property. So, they started to devise a brand new prequel series. Danger, Will Robinson, danger! And the first installment of said prequel series, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, was one of the most surprising movies ever. Surprise! I say surprising because, given that it was a prequel to a beloved science fiction classic, nobody was really expecting it to be anywhere near as good as it was. And in addition to being a decent beginning of a prequel series, it still worked as a standalone film maintaining the social commentary about society and humanity that we all fell in love with in the original film. Then a little while later came the second installment, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and it was even more amazing. Not only had the special effects gotten a lot better then, making the apes look a whole lot more realistic and thus more tangible, but the story and tone had gone to a different direction that made it feel more real. And of course, in both cases, Andy Serkis as the lead character of Caesar was astonishing. His devotion to the craft of motion capture acting is unparalleled. But of course, needless to say, the special effects don't hold both of these movies. It's the story, the direction, and the characters who are all completely three-dimensional and all have a lot to do and a lot to say about the modern world. And then after Dawn, there was only one direction it could possibly go, and the third movie has actually gone there. All Out War. I went so far as to say that this movie made me feel good, but it did make me feel something. It made me feel alive in a way. Like its predecessors before it, it made me think a lot about humanity and society and my own place in the world and you know what, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me summarize the story first. War for the Planet of the Apes takes place a few years after dawn, in which the last remnants of humanity has in fact declared full-scale war against the apes. Their leader, Caesar, once again played by the great Andy Serkis, is doing the best that he can to end the war as quickly as possible. But the humans' leaders, known mostly as the Colonel, played by Woody Harrelson, is determined to retake humanity's place as the dominant species of Earth. And while both sides have equally justifiable reasons for wanting to win the war, like they say in the Highlander movies, there can be only one. 
The thing that has made the Planet of the Apes movies so compelling, especially the recent prequel series, has been its commentary on people as a whole. How things like selfishness and denial and anger and fear can get in the way of actually creating real progress. Caesar is a character who is an ape, but grew up around humans and has an appreciation and understanding and love for them. So he doesn't want the humans to go extinct, he wants to find a better way. But nothing is allowing him that opportunity, especially not the humans. Now, it doesn't do so in a way that completely demonizes humanity and says there's no hope at all or that there aren't any good people within humanity. It does a good job of reminding you that there are still good people. It's just that, unfortunately, their voices can get drowned out. The most important lesson to take away from these movies is that there is always going to be people on either side of a conflict who will want to resolve things in a better way. And it's up to us to be wise and brave enough to see them. Now, brave and bold social commentary aside, as a movie on its own, it is astonishing. Once again, Andy Serkis does a remarkable job playing Caesar, and people really need to start taking motion capture more seriously because this guy really needs an Oscar. The writing is top notch, the editing is perfectly fluid, the cinematography, oh god, the cinematography is gorgeous. And best of all, when it's dark, you can still see what's going on. And for those of you who are wondering, this is the film that finally explains why humanity in the very first Planet of the Apes film had suddenly lost their intelligence. If you saw the first two films and you liked them, you are going to be absolutely satisfied with this conclusion. It may not make you feel the happiest, but it's going to make you feel something. You're going to get an incredible experience out of this movie. I promise you, please go see this right now. And also, Hollywood, please don't try to make any more of these. You've gone as far as you can go with this series. I don't think there's anything else you need to do with it. So please, let this series lie. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm The Norm, telling you in Hollywood it gets things wrong, and when they get things right. Thank you all for watching.